So what really happened that day? Let's just for a moment speculate, shall we? We have the epileptic seizure around 12.15 p.m. distracting the police, making it easier for the shooters to move into their places. The epileptic later vanished, never checking into the hospital. The A-team gets on the sixth floor of the depository. Now, they were refurbishing the floors in the depository that week, which allowed unknown workmen in and out of the building. They moved quickly into position, just minutes before the shooting. The second spotter on the radio talking to the other two teams has the best overall view, the guard spot. B-team, one rifleman and one spotter with the headset and access to the building moves into the low floor of the Daltex building. The third team, the C-team, moves in behind the picket fence above the grassy knoll where the shooter and the spotter are first seen by the late Lee Bowers in the watchtower of the rail yard. They have the best position of all. Kennedy is close and on a flat, low trajectory. Part of this team is a coordinator who's flashed security credentials at several people chasing them out of the parking lot area. Probably two to three more men are down in the crowd on L. 10 to 12 men, three teams, three shooters. The triangulation of fire Clay Shaw and David Ferry discussed two months before. They've walked the plaza. They know every inch. They've calibrated their sights. They've practiced on moving targets. They're ready. Kennedy's motor team makes a turn from Maine onto Houston. It's going to be a turkey shoot. They don't shoot him coming up Houston, which is the easiest shot for a single shooter in the book depository. They wait. They wait till he gets to the killing zone between three rifles. Kennedy makes a final turn from Houston on the Elm, slowing down to some 11 miles an hour. The shooters across Dealey Plaza tighten, taking their aim, waiting for the radio to say, green, green, or aboard, aboard. The first shot rings out. Sounding like a backfire, it misses the car completely. Frame 161, Kennedy stops waving as he hears something. Conley's head turns slightly to the right. Frame 193, the second shot hits Kennedy in the throat from the front. Frame 225, the president emerging from behind the road sign. You can see that he's obviously been hit, raising his arms to his throat. The third shot, frame 232, hits Kennedy in the back, pulling him downward and forward. Conley, you will notice, shows no signs at all of being hit. He is visibly holding his Stetson, which is impossible if his wrist has been shattered. Conley is turning here now, frame 238, the fourth shot. It misses Kennedy and takes Conley in the back. This is the shot that proves there were two rifles. Conley yells out, my God, they're going to kill us all. Somewhere around this time now, another shot that misses the car completely strikes James Craig down by the underpass. Breaks. The sixth and fatal shot, frame 313, takes Kennedy in the head from the front. This is the key shot. The president going back and to his left. Shot from the front and right. Totally inconsistent with the shot from the depository. Again, back and to the left. Back and to the left. Back and to the left, back and to the left. 